I love open source. The idea that people actually make something useful and publish it so the whole world can use it, it's truly amazing. Now, what's the main home of everything open source? It's GitHub. And today, I'll be sharing with you six GitHub repos that truly show the value of open source and how far innovation can truly take you. There are many AI coding tools available today, and this past year has brought us plenty of options. However, many people agree that right now, Claude Code is currently the best coding agent out there, powered by the best model out there. Now, you can accomplish quite a lot with the base version of Claude Code on its own, but Anthropic has designed Claude Code as a modular system so that the community can build upon it. This includes Claude Code hooks, Claude subagents, and Claude Code slash commands. People have even created GUIs on top of Claude Code plus full framework works that harness its full capabilities. Now, with so many possibilities with Claude Code, how do you actually find what you're looking for? Well, the first repo that we're going to be talking about solves that very problem. It's called Awesome Claude Code, and it's a curated collection of files, workflows, commands, and much more. It's essentially a comprehensive folder containing all the amazing tools and workflows that you can use with Claude Code, and it's all in one place. You can see here that we have full workflows built with Claude Code, and then you even have access to some outstanding Claude Code tools. One I personally use that is listed here, the Claude Code Usage Monitor, which helps me track my Claude Code instance usage. There's also Claude Squad, which I've also covered in a previous video. This tool basically lets you manage multiple Claude Code sessions. We also have different hooks for Claude Code that you can use to program Claude Code's behavior. This GitHub repository functions as a community hub where the author continuously adds excellent Claude Code tools and resources. Now you could use the base version of Claude Code, but I encourage you to come into this repo and have a look because I guarantee that you will find at least one thing that will make you much more productive. Now a quick break to tell you today's sponsor. AI agents can write code code, fix bugs, even build entire apps. But let's be honest, they're still pretty bad at UI. You know that moment. You're staring at an auto-generated layout thinking, yeah, this can't ship. It's clunky, misaligned, awkward, and you're left wondering where to even start. That's where Mobin comes in. Mobin is your ultimate design research sidekick, giving you instant access to thousands of hand-picked UI patterns from the world's most successful web and mobile apps. Whether you're designing a dashboard, a pricing page, a modal, or onboarding flow, Mobin shows you exactly how top-tier products solve the same challenges. And this isn't just random inspiration. Everything is organized, searchable, and beautifully curated. Browse by platform, category, app, or even UX goals. So you're not guessing. You're designing with purpose. With Mobin, you're not starting from a blank canvas. You're building with clarity and creativity. Stop guessing. Start designing. Visit Mobin.com. Link in the description. With the state of AI right now, you can't just throw in a prompt and expect it to build something meaningful. Eventually, something will break because these models have context windows and they forget things over time. So everything needs to be documented and followed in a step-by-step -step plan. And this is exactly where this second repo comes in. What it introduces is actually a new method of development called the BMAD method. In this method, your AI agents, whether it's Claude Code or Cursor, actually follow the Agile method. Basically, in the Agile method, you break down your whole project into small chunks, turn them into weekly goals called sprints and then aim to achieve those goals within a week. And you don't just develop, you actually write code and then test it to make sure that everything works and there is no chance of any errors. And this method isn't for a single person, but a whole team of software devs. So when you bring this approach to your AI agents, what happens is quite interesting. It gives you dedicated agents for each role in the dev team. They break down your project from a PRD and architecture document into small stories. And then each of those stories contains the task to be completed and all the context needed to complete that task. So, for example, a dev agent writes the code based on the story that it's working on. Now it has the task and all the context needed for that task, so there is no way that it hallucinates and messes up the code. This is the real power of what the BMAD method gives you. We do have a full dedicated video on this, which covers the most basic workflow. I'll link it in the description below. But if you want to learn the whole workflow, you need to read the whole workflow guide files. But there is actually a way around that, and I'll show you that later later on in the video. Now, when you're actually building apps, the UI is one of the most important parts because that's what your user sees and interacts with. And if that's not good, then your app doesn't feel good either. But you don't have to spend a lot of time creating your own design or crafting great looking UI elements from scratch. If you're building a web app, you can simply use components from existing libraries. For example, ShadCN is a really good example of a component library. It gives you ready-made components that you can install in your code base 
and use right away. And now, with AI, you don't even have to know how to add them. Just tell your AI agent what you need and it does it for you. Now, while ShadCN is just one library, there are actually many more options out there. This is where the next GitHub repository comes in, the awesome UI component library. It's a curated list of framework-specific component libraries for different UI styles and toolkits. Whether you're using Next.js built on React, Vue.js, or another framework, this repo has you covered. You'll find tons of different libraries that you can explore and copy components from. For example, here we have many UI libraries for React. One example is Ant Design. And if I go into the Components tab, you can see that we get all these different components that I can actually use and implement in my app and even build my app around them. And beyond just UI libraries, we also have special use case libraries like ReCharts, which is a chart library that helps you easily create charts. Then we have style icons, reusable spinners for loading screens. So there's a lot of stuff here, all dedicated to UI. If you really want to dig deep and make sure that your app looks good, this is definitely the place to start. What's even better is that you can use this with the BMAD method we talked about earlier. In the BMAD method, there's also an agent for UI and UX design. With that, you can ask the AI for specific components, come back to this repo, choose the ones you want, and in this way, build out your entire app. Now, the next MCP server is called Git MCP. From the name, you can probably guess what it does. It allows you to convert any GitHub repo into an MCP server. This is the tool that I was talking about and basically, it allows you to convert any GitHub repository into a knowledge base for your AI agent. Take the GitHub repos we covered earlier. If you don't know how to use them, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to know how to use them. Your AI agent should. It needs to have the proper context about them. And the easiest way to provide that is using this tool called Git MCP. They've given a great example of how their output actually improved by using context from Git MCP. Now let's say you use the BMAD repo with this tool. The BMAD method has really complex workflows, as I've mentioned before. Usually you'd have to go through all those workflows and learn how to use them. But here's what you can actually do instead. Simply grab the link to the BMAD method repo, go to the Git MCP repository and scroll up. You'll find the link to the site where Git MCP is hosted. There, you'll see a prompt box. Paste your GitHub repo link and convert it into an MCP server. They also offer a chat option where you can actually chat with the GitHub repository directly. In some cases, you don't even need to convert it into a knowledge base. If you just have a single question about the repo, you can use the chat option. Otherwise, you can convert it into an MCP. It'll give you a remote MCP server URL, which means it doesn't require anything on your local system. You don't need to store the documentation locally. Below that, you'll find configuration options for different AI tools that can use MCP servers. For example, Claude Code, Claude Desktop, and Cursor. We're going to copy the command for Cursor, open up Cursor, and paste the Git MCP configuration we received. If you go back and check, you'll see it's now active. So even if I'm using the BMAD method with Cursor and run into a problem, I can ask Cursor itself how to fix that problem with the BMAD method. It's really an amazing tool. The next GitHub repository is called Fast API MCP, and this is truly an amazing tool. Using this, you can actually create simple applications and then allow an AI agent to control the whole app. Just imagine this for a moment. You could make an app like Notion and with just one import, you're adding the ability for an AI to control the whole app and build the entire Notion system for you. It's absolutely incredible. Now, if you're not familiar with Fast API, let me quickly explain. It's a framework for building APIs in Python applications. Here's where it gets interesting. These APIs are used to control your application. MCP, as we know, is a protocol that allows an LLM to automatically use any API. So when you start connecting these dots together, you'll begin to understand that any MCP client can actually control your application using Fast API MCP. What Fast API MCP does is let you expose your API endpoints as tools for the MCP server and MCP client. Now, you might be wondering about the setup process, and I'm happy to tell you that it's actually quite straightforward. They have provided comprehensive documentation for the tool, and if you want to see this in action, you can also watch our dedicated video on it. You'll find the link in the description below. Let me walk you through a quick example to show you how powerful this is. I built a to-do list app and added all its endpoints to the MCP server using Fast API MCP. Then I connected that MCP inside cursor. What I did next was tell it that I was building a new front-end project that needed to be broken down into tasks and that it should add those tasks to the to-do list application. The results were fascinating. You can see it breaks down the project and automatically adds those tasks to the to-do list app. And this happens because the app's endpoints are available as MCP tools. What this means is that the entire
entire app can now be controlled by a model. The next GitHub repository is MCP Use Library, and it's an amazing library that you can import directly into your code. Basically, it allows you to connect any LLM to any MCP server. This means you no longer need an MCP client like Claude Code or Claude Desktop to use MCP servers. You can implement them directly in your code and access any MCP server, which gives you external data. But don't only think of it as a way to just use MCP servers. Think of it as a new way to actually make applications. Consider the YouTube DLP MCP server. It extracts the transcript of any YouTube video link you provide and returns the transcription. Using that transcription, you can summarize a YouTube video. You don't need to build a complicated application. You can just use this MCP server with MCP use, write a small Python file, and with any LLM, it will run the tool, get the data, and summarize it. This way, your whole application is implemented with just a single MCP server. If we scroll down, they've given a simple example of Airbnb MCP. They use it to retrieve search results from Airbnb. Essentially, they're automating the Airbnb search using a model without having to use the API because they can just use the MCP server. If you look further down, you'll see the prompt where they specify the requirements for where they want to stay. By using the Airbnb MCP server, which is defined in the Airbnb MCP.json file, the LLM retrieves the results and returns them. Now I use the Airbnb example file by just copying it and adding it to a Python file. Let me show you the results. You can also see the Airbnb MCP.json right there. When I run the file, it first starts up the MCP server and the LLM automatically uses the MCP server without any MCP clients. At the end, you can see that we get the listings along with the links, which we can easily open and they match our requirements. All of this is done with this simple syntax. We just import an LLM, import the MCP use library, and we're ready to use it. Think of it this way. The MCP use library gives you a small agent that automatically uses MCP. MCP servers. Imagine the potential. You can actually build AI applications that run on models in the back end. This is truly a revolutionary tool that you should use. Also, you don't need to learn the syntax. Just use git mcp or git ingest to get the data and put it in a markdown file. Then give that to Claude Code to build out the app for you. It's that simple. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.